Good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for coming to our HOSA CTSO update. Just so that you know, we are recording this. And if you have any questions, feel free to either hold them till the end or put them in the chat. We have multiple people monitoring it. So my name is Olivia Swainston and I'm the Idaho HOSA president. I'm about to be a freshman at Idaho State University in less than a week. I will be majoring in biomedical sciences and this is my fifth year of HOSA. Hello everybody, my name is Maddie Healy. I'm the president-elect of HOSA this year. I am going into my junior year at Meridian Medical. Um, the past two years I have participated in parliamentary procedure and my team and I have placed first each year, and this will be my third year as a HOSA member. Hi, my name is Abby Black. I am the Region VP this year. I will be a senior at Skyview High School in Nampa, and I have placed first in health science education as of 2020's SLC and second in 2019. This is also my third year in HOSA. And hello, my name is Michael Wilson. I'm the post-secondary vice president for HOSA this year. I will be a freshman at the College of Idaho, double majoring in biomedical science and Spanish with a minor in anthropology, and this is my fifth year of HOSA as well. So, just a quick recap of our HOSA state membership trends. As you can tell from the year of 2018, we've been keeping strong with our membership. Last year, we did have around 1,300 kids, um, even with all of the restrictions that we had. Um, we had a little bit less attend um, HOSA SLC, but we're still keeping strong with our membership, and hopefully we can continue that throughout this year. So this is our state leadership recap. We had four 419 attendees from 19 different chapters. Our HOSA hero was Connie Cruiser, and our first virtual SLC was very successful. As for a virtual ILC, um, we had 7,300 attendees in total. Idaho represented with 175 of those, of which seven placed in the top 10. So with that, I'd like to present this year's SLC theme, which is Stronger Together. We felt that as a group and just with our current atmosphere, with everything going on amidst the pandemic, everyone is stronger together, whether that be virtually or whatever. And so we really feel that being together is a lot better than being isolated and distant from each other. And so that's our theme. This year will be a little different for our pin and t-shirt design. We will not have a design contest this year. The state officers and I will be creating the pin. Shirt designs will also come from us, but we will have multiple designs and we will email those out to advisors. We will put them on social media. And at BASIC, we will also have the students vote for what shirt they want so that they can be involved in that process. As you can see from the picture at the bottom of the slide, that was what would have been last year's pins. We will be selling those as well in conjunction with this year's pins. National HOSA has come out with their theme for the 2020 ILC, which will be Unlock Your Potential and that will be held at Disney's Coronado Springs Resort in Orlando, Florida from the 23rd to the 26th. Alrighty, and as for HOSA week this year, it will be held November 1st through November 7th, and you can look on the national website for these dates again, as well as staying tuned on our social media for different themes that we're going to be releasing for that. So we do have some board updates. We used to have an event called Extemporaneous Health Poster. Internationals actually moved that event, so it's now only a middle school event. So that will be replaced by research poster presentation, and that will be for secondary and post-secondary students. We will be adding the following events, medical assisting and health informatics. And also extemporaneous writing will be taken prior to SLC with all of the other round one testing events. 
we will be holding an SLC, hopefully in person, but if we need to, due to the current state restrictions, we will hold it virtually. The safety of our students is definitely the most important to us, but we want to make sure that we're still giving them the HOSA experience. And we are looking for a couple of board members. If you are interested in serving on our board, please let Jessie know. Her information will be a bit later in the PowerPoint. Our officers would like to have virtual chapter visits this year, anywhere up to 30 minutes, longer if you'd like, shorter if you'd like, to talk about leadership, membership, or anything that your chapter officers may need help with. Um, so let us know if you'd like shorter or longer sessions, and we will be taking appointments shortly, and we should have a link sent out sometime next week. So just a little bit of FYI for everyone. We will be sending out a couple surveys to help prepare everyone for SLC. And Stephanie Garcia, our CTSO manager, is helping to work and create an advisor directory. So make sure to submit your information to her at her email, and we'll get that all squared away so that everyone has a way to know who the different advisors are. And we are also planning on having a monthly Zoom meeting to help answer any questions that we might have throughout the year. Alrighty, so as a how can we help you, um, basically we want to know what we can do for your chapters and how the board can help support your chapters as well. Um, we are open to questions from for ourselves as well as our CTSO managers, Jesse or Stephanie. Yeah, so this is a time when you can unmute yourself if you want to ask us as state officers of how we can help your chapter, or are there any questions in the chat or no? No. Okay, so is there anyone who wants to ask anything? I have a question. Keep it silent for a couple seconds. I'll ask a quick question. It might not be something that the state officers by themselves can answer. <laughs> Go to you're muted. No, I'm not. I'm not. <laughs> I'm not. <laughs> is your volume up on your computer? Yeah. Yeah. Yes, it is. And we can pull up the. If you can you can oh, that. we hear you. Okay. You hear me now? Yes. There we go. Yes. Okay, yeah. So I don't know if, if the state officers can answer this or if this is a question for uh, some of the CTE. Uh, people in the room, but do you have any idea at what point in the school year your hand will kind of be forced to make the call on whether we're going to have a state versus virtual? I mean, how far out uh, do you have to know that you're going to be able to do a uh, in-person conference? Perfect. Do you remember talking about this in the board meeting? Do you want to answer it or do you want to answer it? Um, yep. So at our most recent board meeting, part of the reason we're going to send a survey is to get a temperature of what each school and district is able to do. We hope to make that decision by December. We know that a lot can change from December to April, but we want to give everyone the, we want to, if we have to go virtual, we want to give everyone as much notice as we can. So our plan is to make that decision by our December board meeting, and we will continue to keep advisors updated. That was a big thing with our um, hopefully monthly meetings was we were going to keep an eye on everything, see if any more restrictions are put up, and that way we can let you know as fast as possible. So. Thank you. Of course. Is there anyone else with any questions? We're good? Okay, perfect. So. If you do have any other questions, you can reach out to Jessie. There are each of her contacts, her email, and those phone numbers. This is also located on the Idaho sub website. As well as contacting state officers, um, I will be keeping our Instagram updated. And these are all of our individual emails that you are more than welcome to reach out to us with, as well as all of our information is also on the Idaho sub website.
So thank you so much for attending the first part of our CTSO update. Your state officers, thank you as well. And now we are going to turn the time over to Carrie Staub for some competitive event information. So Jeff, we're just gonna share. Good morning, Hosa. Um, these are, of course, unprecedented times, and HOSA is working really hard to put together some resources to be used in your classes to help retain membership, recruit new membership, and just assist in keeping um, classroom lesson planning uh, relatively simple using our HOSA guidelines. So be on the lookout for that. That's gonna be really helpful, especially if you're looking for some things to incorporate really easily into a virtu virtual learning environment, but they can also be used within your classroom environment in person as well. Um, some things that are going on for competitive events. Uh, this PowerPoint is actually posted on the HOSA website under the useful tools tab under competitive events, but really quickly, competitor orientations, I should say separate competitor orientations, are not gonna be held at ILC. Uh, we feel like we've done a really good job communicating the information that students need to be successful in their events, and that time can now be dedicated to extending event times or increasing the number of participants that can be uh, judged during competitions. So it's really, really, really vital that student members know where to find that information. And again, there are going to be webinars that will be posted online to assist them in finding all of that stuff as well. Uh, most of them, editing changes, formatting changes, submissions are gonna be electronic. So ILC is no longer going to require paper copies to be brought to ILC. Students can bring paper submissions to use in their presentations if they choose to, but there are no points associated on the rating sheet for doing so. The exceptions to that will be events that have a display time. Um, those they're gonna want to make sure that they have their displays, health care display, medical innovation. Those types of events are still gonna have physical submissions that will need to come to ILC but community awareness, health education, those portfolios are no longer gonna be required to be in person, and they're no longer gonna be required to bring extra copies. Binder pockets have been eliminated, and other editing changes like title pages, et cetera, have been updated. Annual topics um, are posted. Some of the big ones include biomedical debate, we're looking at designer babies. Parents should be allowed to genetically engineer their offspring. PSA is gonna be a really cool one. The future of healthcare, how HOSA is making a difference. HOSA chapters are gonna be asked to look at their current HOSA members and even their alumni and basically brag a little bit, dare I say, about what they've been doing to assist in the communities that they live in. Uh, research persuasive speaking, deals with technology use, does it make us more or less connected? Public health is talking about reducing health disparities. That's a big conversation these days. Social determinants of health can help. And of course, prepared speaking and speaking skills are always our conference theme, which is unlock your potential. Medical reading books are posted. Um, I don't know about you, but if I'm looking for something to read in between the research and Brene Brown, I always look to the host of medical reading list. I hear Compassionomics is really good. I'm looking forward to picking that one up. Health Informatics is a new event. Idaho has chosen to adopt it, which will be exciting because this is a growing field and really needed. So it's gonna be a test, 75 questions in 90 minutes, and the resources are posted in the guidelines just as they are for all the health science tests. Medical spelling, cool thing. Uh, Tabers has actually offered a audio glossary online. So that's gonna be used for the spelling bee in medical spelling at ILC. 
and we'll look into using that at the state levels as well. That way it'll help with pronunciation issues. Uh, extemporaneous health poster, as Olivia mentioned, has now been moved solely to middle school. Idaho does not offer middle school currently. So in its place, HOSA has put together a research poster event. At the secondary level, the students will uh, research a question around a health topic and develop a research poster, much like you see done in uh, colleges. And then at the college level, not only will they put together their research in a poster, but they're also gonna have to defend it. Biomedical debate is being changed. They are gonna have a seated bracket round. This has been asked for for quite some time. In order to make that happen, the debate format is gonna be slightly altered and debates will now be 15 minutes as opposed to the 23 minutes they were previously. Uh, Hostable is definitely getting revamped. Uh, teams will be required to have exactly four members, no more, no less. The first eight minutes of the round are going to be a head to head matchup. So, team member A will match up against question with team member A on the opposing team. Team member B will get the next question against team member B on the other team, et cetera, et cetera. The last two minutes of the round will actually be um, first come first serve on who gets to answer the questions. So that'll be pretty exciting. We think that that's going to assist with a lot of the complaints about people having access to questions or knowing how to beat the buzzers, et cetera. Um, other changes, there are some skill changes in nursing assisting and personal care. There are some resource changes. Again, tallow or um, tallow is going to be required for a number of different events, so be on the lookout for that. The full listing, of course, is going to be under the competition tab on the useful tools page. Is that it for slides? You might um, just, here, just hover over it and we can see if down here. Oh, there we go, perfect. So if you have any questions, you can contact me at my West Data email or at hosa.org. Um, we are here to help. It is really especially helpful when there are uh, requests for specific guideline changes to help make the guidelines more user-friendly or understandable. Um, we're always looking at that. The evaluations that are um, completed at ILC, I get to read through every single one of those every year. So it's really important that we get feedback from our membership to make sure that we're providing the services that you need. Are there any questions? Oh. Um, Jesse just asked me to remind you that we also added medical assisting to the Idaho lineup. So that will actually be a pretty exciting addition, especially for our post-secondary chapters. Do you have any questions? No questions? Wow. I don't know if I put you to sleep or, or what, but I thank you for your uh, attention today. Stay safe. Well, thank you everyone so much for coming to this CTSO update. Again, if you have any questions, all of our information is on the Idahosa website. And obviously if you have any questions for Staub, there's her information right there. Oh, yes, we are recording this meeting and we will be sending this out to all of you. So if there's more, no more questions, you are all free to go. Thank you so much.